Hi Spring fans, welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. In this installment, we're going to take a look at the brand new, just announced, Spring Cloud Circuit Breaker project. The whole point of the Circuit Breaker project is to provide an abstraction on top of, uh, well, other Circuit Breakers, certainly, uh, including, but not limited to, uh, Netflix's Hystrix, Resilience for J, uh, Alibaba's Sentinel, which I introduced in a previous Spring Tips, by the way, and we also introduced um, uh, Hystrix and Spring Retry. So it's uh, uh, Alibaba, Sentinel, Spring Retry, Hystrix, and Resilience for J that are, these are the four supported circuit breakers. We've looked at three of those uh, in, in previous installments of Spring Tips, uh, wherein we uh, looked at circuit breakers generally with uh, Hystrix and Spring Retry a few years ago, and then more recently we looked at Alibaba's Spring Cloud integration. <coughs> now, these different technologies can be used within Spring Cloud from a unified abstraction, thanks to this new project that we've just announced, that supports both reactive and non-reactive uh, sort of use cases. It's not yet GA, so we're going to have to add our dependency manually, but that's not a big deal. Let's go back to uh, my second favorite place on the internet, of course, start.spring.io. And we're going to build a new application here. Uh, we're just going to call this uh, Circuit Breaker, okay? And we're going to use 2.2.0 Snapshot, latest and greatest. And I'll bring in Lumbuck, I'll bring in the reactive web support. Uh, and uh, there is no Circuit Breaker dependency, not yet anyway, so we need to we need to add that uh, uh, manually, okay? Uh, with this, we can go ahead and build an application. I want to have Cloud Bootstrap, so I have the, I, that way it'll give me the Spring Cloud um, uh, dependency management, you know, the, the Maven repository and, and the bomb and all that stuff, so I can just add uh, the dependency I need for, for a Spring Cloud Circuit Breaker, and I don't have to worry about the rest. All right. That's there. Open up a shell here. CD downloads UAO circuit breaker. All right. And uh, we're just going to add the one dependency that we need. So we're going to go to palm.xml. And uh, we're just going to add the 0, 0, you know, 1 snapshot version of the Spring Cloud Starter Circuit Breaker project. Okay, so dependencies, Spring Cloud, Circuit Breaker Resilience for J. So we're going to bring uh, we're going to bring in the resilience for J implementation. That'll of course in, in turn transitively bring in everything else we need. I neglected to specify Java 11 back at the Spring Initializer, so I'll do that right here. And I'm going to hit Maven reimport, bring in all the dependencies, force it to refresh its understanding of the layout of my dependency management graph. Okay, and then we'll go to, go to our program. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build a simple application that has a web endpoint, um, and that web endpoint will act as the client. We can use that to to invoke and observe behavior in the system, but it in turn will call something that will uh, will that will fail, right? It'll call a service. Now I could create a network service. I could create another service uh, and make this a client that talks to another thing over the network, but there's really no need because all I need to care about here is uh, the the behavior of the client with respect to some other thing, right? So if that client throws an exception, who cares whether that exception is because of a network call or whatever, right? Uh, so the, and the circuit breaker doesn't care. It just knows that you're calling something that might fail. Uh, as far as it's concerned, it could be anything, right? So um, we're going to start with a very simple uh, failing service, okay? Class failing service. I'm going to make this a service bean, like so. All right. And our failing service is going to... Uh, we're going to use it to generate a a um, a string, um, a greeting of some sort, a, a publisher uh, string. Okay. And um, actually, it could be a mono. I suppose it could be a mono. That's a good idea. So let's just do greet string name. But you know, the name could be. It could be. Let's make the name optional. I want the name to be something that you can either specify or not. Uh, so that we have a way of introducing variability and triggering an exception, okay? 
you wouldn't normally design a program that fails if you have an optional that returns nothing. That's the whole point of an optional. But I want to use that as a way for us to, to um, force this program to throw an exception under a certain condition. And that condition will be if there is no value in the name. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that um, we have a return value or a URL or a greeting, I guess. So var greeting equals name dot map. Um, and we're going to basically say, okay, if the string is there, then we say hello string, okay, or else, or else, um, well, I guess that's it, actually. We want to return a publisher, don't we? So we want to return a publisher with that string. So mono.just. Okay, there's this, or else, mono.error, all right? So we're gonna throw an exception uh, in the pipeline if you don't return, if you don't provide a string. It could be any exception. I'm using no pointer exception because it's an exception that's on hand. It doesn't really matter what we use. Um, and so I guess I just wanna return that. I don't even need to have the intermediate variable, do I? So I could say return, all right. Good stuff. All right, so there's my little service. Now let's build an endpoint, uh, a, a HTTP endpoint that will in turn call that, and that will depend upon the the behavior. Okay, so we'll create a REST controller here, and I'm I'm using reactive APIs here, but it, it, it's the same idea. You could actually return, you could use the non-reactive circuit breaker support as well. There's a, it's a separate type, and I'll show you the show you what, where that would look a little different, but it doesn't matter, right? It it's actually more interesting for me that this works nicely for reactive code, but they're both supported. Okay, so REST controller, okay. And what are we gonna do? We are going to have a constructor. So I'm gonna say private final failing service. Okay. And we're going to have a constructor that injects the failing service. All right. Okay, and we're gonna have a, uh, an endpoint, a get mapping, that is called greet. So, publisher. Of type string, greet. And we're gonna take optional We'll take an optional request parameter, right? So you give us a name. We're going to pass that down to the uh, underlying service. Okay. Good stuff. And we're going to say return um, this dot failing service dot greet. Passing in the name. So you know if you say if you make a request an HTTP get request to forward slash greet question mark name equals you know foo or bar it'll call this and that'll be okay right if you return if you just say forward slash greet without the parameter well of course we know that that'll result in a null pointer uh, exception right minor to error no pointer so we want to protect against this failing and so here's a great example of where we could use a circuit breaker so we're going to inject our circuit breaker factory and there's actually two variants there's a circuit breaker factory or the reactive circuit breaker factory. Okay, so I, of course, naturally, am going to inject the uh, reactive one. Okay, there's this. And private final circuit breaker. Or is it reactive circuit breaker, right? So there's two of them there. So we'll use the circuit breaker factory to create an instance and then stash it. Okay, and this is gonna be called greet. And we, we can now wrap this thing that returns a publisher, bar results equals this, right? Um, that's a cold stream right now, right? We haven't actually executed it, we haven't subscribed to it, and so it doesn't do anything yet. 
Uh, so we can say return this dot circuit breaker dot run, and we'll just pass it the cold stream, and it'll apply the default configuration for all circuit breakers in the system. If we want to provide a fallback uh, behavior, we can use uh, we can provide a function that looks like this. Okay, so the idea is that given a, an exception of some sort, we return a publisher of string, right? So we could just, uh, you know, mono.just hello world, all right, naturally, nice lambda. All right, so there's our, uh, there's our greetings endpoint and our failing service that makes a network that could make a network call using the reactive web client or or our sockets, uh, our socket requester, or whatever, right? I'm sure you can imagine how you would make a reactive web call at this point. That's not the point of this video. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. That circuit breaker here uh, is using greet as a string. It's an arbitrary string. You, I've given it a name so that you can then define configuration for it somewhere else, right? So you can actually configure the specifics of the circuit breaker by by that string ID. So that's how you link this circuit breaker to configuration that you would define elsewhere. We haven't specified any configuration, so we get the default sort of generic global configuration. Um, let's see what this looks like. Okay, let's see what that looks like right now. Localhost greet name equals Tasha. Okay, so we got and then Bob. There's a. It's working. Okay, now what if we drop the name? Hello world, right? The circuit breaker was invoked. So you can see that's pretty interesting, right? We get some um, uh, some very, very simple behavior here, but it, we can see how it's working. Now, the circuit breaker is pretty, it's doing the right thing, right? We're getting our default fallback. We're controlling how the service fails um, and uh, we're, we're, we're able to behave or to add some other behavior as, as we need to. Uh, and we just wrap it with this little lambda. It's very, very simple to do that. Okay, so I like that. Um, but I want to configure, I want to override some configuration here and specify, for example, how uh, a circuit breaker behaves if, for example, a, a, a pathway that's being invoked takes too long. Okay, I want to configure the default behavior for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to override the default uh, res reactive resilience for J circuit breaker factory. I'll provide the bean. Okay. Like so. So I can I can um, react to reasons for J circuit breaker factory. So there's my factory factory equals this, and I want to configure some things uh, before I get too far down the line. So that you can override that. You can do that for you know all the factories. Uh, I'm going to override it for this, and I can just can configure things on this as well. So I want to configure the default behavior for example. And the way you do that is you are given a string which corresponds to the ID that's to be configured and you provide a configuration using the config builder. And so uh, I am going to build a new resilience for J config builder passing in the ID that I've been given that's S and then I'll call that build and I have some options here. I have some options to specify for example uh, time limiter. So time limiter config dot custom dot build. Uh, and I'm going to specify the timeout duration. And the duration I'm going to specify is uh, five seconds. All right. So I'm going to say that I will, uh, in, after five seconds, if an endpoint that I'm calling takes longer than five seconds, which is a preposterously long amount of time, you shouldn't uh, have anything hopefully taking five seconds. But if you do, this will trigger the circuit breaker and you'll get the default fallback behavior which is what you want in this case we also want some circuit breaker config we can just use the circuit breaker config default right so there you go and of course this lends itself to a lambda good stuff okay so this is my default configuration now i did say you can configure specific circuit breakers as well so you could say factory dot configure and there the second parameter is a variadic array of string IDs okay these are the IDs to which this configuration should apply so you could say greet you could provide a configuration there just like I did for the default 
and uh, and specify greet as the uh, second parameter. And that would that would mean that the configuration only applied to that particular circuit breaker. All right. So now, uh, in order for us to, in order for us to see this in action, we need to introduce a little bit of time into our uh, into our flow here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, uh, delay the publication of data. So we're going to say map this to a string or else to an error. Um, but we want to delay the elements, right? So we're going to say duration dot of seconds. And we want that seconds count to be something that we arrive at dynamically. So again, I'm, I'm doing this to, to sort of uh, uh, stub out a, a slow network call, okay? So I'm going to say long math dot random times 10. Okay, so I'm, I'm creating a seconds argument. So it's going to be, if it's, you know, if it's, if it's five, six, seven, if it's, uh, you know, anything above five or maybe equal to five, uh, then of course it'll trigger the circuit breaker. Otherwise it'll return the normal value. Okay, so we're introducing a delay in how fast this publisher gets published, this item gets published. Okay. We should actually, um, let's, let's indicate how long it took. And I'll log it out as well so we can see what should have been returned and what is. So var. All right. Oh, you know what? We need to put that in here. Okay, get rid of that. There's this. Good stuff. So now, return this. Get rid of that. Okay, so there's our, our string. I'm recording this video on QuickTime. So it's making my CPU crawl. Everything is super slow. Log for J. All right. Okay. So there we go. Uh, now we restart. Okay. So that's working. Name equals Bob. Nine seconds. So that that will trigger the circuit breaker, and we should just get hello world after five seconds, right? In one second, we get it back. Hello Bob in one. In eight seconds, that'll give us hello world, right? Because that's more than five seconds. So there you go. Six, again, we get hello world. You can see it in the logs there in the bottom. You can see what it's trying to prepare for us, but it takes too long. So the circuit breaker is acting on behalf of the client saying, no, 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 I can't wait this long. Uh, I got to go. So here's hello world instead. All right. So we, we can see that the uh, circuit breaker, uh, uh, you know, it works perfectly. It works nicely. It's easily add it to an existing code base. It doesn't add much more uh, weight. Um, there are still things, still some things that uh, to be done. You know, I think there's discussion of uh, discussion around adding support for annotations. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that would look like. Uh, Ryan Baxter and the team are working on this uh, and are, of course, always eager to get feedback. So if you uh, chime in on GitHub issues or if you send the messages on the um, on the Gitter that I am uh, GitHub authenticated uh, software community community channels that'd be awesome or Twitter at Spring Cloud. Um, there's also uh, perhaps a use case for dynamically you know programmatically adding sorry prog programmatically opening and closing the circuit breaker. I mean all sorts of interesting possibilities beyond this, but the uh, the important stuff is here uh, right now. And so this is actually an, a nice way forward uh, for people who are trying to 
to move their code to this uh, uh, to move their code away, for example, from uh, uh, Hystrix, which, for example, has been put into maintenance mode by uh, by Netflix. So if you're on it, this is a great opportunity to get off of it. And you can use Hystrix, right? There's actually a Hystrix implementation. Uh, though, I, were I you, uh, I would start with something like Resilience for J if you don't already have a, an investment in or dependency on Hystrix. Uh, all right, my friends, thanks for watching, and as always, and uh, we'll see you next time.